there are no limits to the human spirit. I thought I would see the end of physics, but now I think the wonder of discovery will continue long after I am gone. When you gaze up at the sky on a clear night, you will most likely see a lot of stars. The fact that some of them are millions of light years away is incredible, but scientists are more enthusiastic about something even further away. With the help of the new James Webb Space Telescope, they have uncovered something enormous lurking at the very end of the universe. What have scientists discovered? How did the JWST contribute to its detection? And does this object have any impact on our planet? Come with us as we investigate the colossal object found at the universe's edge by the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists didn't know much about the universe when they planned and built the Hubble Space Telescope, the most innovative astronomical observatory of its time. One of these questions was whether or not there were stars and galaxies after the Big Bang. Even if they knew about these stars and galaxies from long ago, they didn't have the technology to make Hubble see them. By the time they built it, science had moved on and changed in some ways. And in the 1980s, just before the launch of Hubble in 1990, astronomers found that galaxies formed much earlier than they had thought. It became clear that another, even bigger space observatory would be needed to reach those early stars and galaxies, which lit up the universe after it had been dark for hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, when there were only hydrogen atoms in the expanding space. Since its operation, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has been giving us amazing views of the universe. Before Webb, the Hubble Space Telescope was another important tool for astronomers. Both are based in space, but there are many ways in which they are different. Hubble can see ultraviolet light, visible light, and a small amount of infrared. Webb, on the other hand, can see the whole range of infrared light. Astronomers can see even further into space with Webb because it is a hundred times more powerful than Hubble. Webb's first few months of observations have shown that it can take the most beautiful pictures of the universe ever taken. Webb provided sharp views of Jupiter's auroras and storms that Hubble can't see. In August of last year, Webb took pictures of Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system. Webb's image of the gas giant is clearer and sharper than Hubble's, which you can see on the left in the picture above. It also shows new details of Jupiter's auroras and storm systems. Above, on the right, Webb's picture of Jupiter shows that the planet's great red spot, a huge storm that has been going on for hundreds of years, is so bright from reflected sunlight that it looks white. Webb's infrared picture also shows that both poles of Jupiter are lit up by auroras. Auroras are colorful light shows that don't just happen on Earth. NASA says that the auroras on Jupiter are the most powerful in the solar system. Auroras happen on both Earth and Jupiter when charged particles from the Sun interact with a planet's magnetic field, called the magnetosphere. The magnetic field around Jupiter is about 20,000 times stronger than the one around Earth. Webb revealed thread-like filaments in the Orion Nebula hidden to Hubble. NASA shared pictures that Webb took in September of the Orion Nebula, a huge area where stars are being made that is 1,350 light-years from Earth. The nebula is the closest place to us where stars are born. Instruments that use visible light, like Hubble's picture of the nebula to the left, can't see the structures that are making stars because they are hidden by clouds of dust. By collecting infrared light, Webb can see through these layers of dust and show astronomers parts of the nebula that have never been seen before. Astronomers think that the nebula are clouds made up of huge, tangled structures that look like threads. These structures are called filaments and they feed material like gas to stars to help them form and stay alive. Webb's pictures show in great detail these threads of gas. In the epic pillars of creation, Webb showed a lot of stars that Hubble couldn't see. In October, NASA released a picture Webb took of the pillars of creation, which are tall columns of gas and dust where stars are born. The Eagle Nebula, a huge cloud of dust and gas 6,500 light years away, is home to the epic star nursery. Hubble also took a picture of the famous nursery in 1995, as shown to the left above. When you put the two pictures next to each other, you can see that Webb's camera can see through solid columns of space dust to hundreds of stars that Hubble couldn't see. Webb spied countless galaxies that Hubble missed. One of the first pictures NASA showed from Webb was a deep field picture, which is a long exposure view of a part of the sky that lets the telescope catch the light of every faint, faraway object. 
NASA says that the picture was taken in less than a day. Bill Nelson, who is in charge of NASA, said that if you held a grain of sand out in front of you, that would be the size of the part of the universe you see in this picture. Lisa Kalteniger, an astronomy professor at Cornell University and the head of the Carl Sagan Institute, told insiders in the past that the deep field image makes her feel both amazed and hopeful. When Hubble's deep field and webs are put next to each other, it shows how much sharper and stronger the New Space Observatory is. Webb revealed two stars inside this nebula, where Hubble only saw one. This is the Southern Ring Nebula, where a dying star is slowly sending out layers of its atmosphere in waves, making colorful bubbles of gas that keep getting bigger. Scientists knew there were two stars at the center of the nebula, but Hubble's pictures didn't show them. The dying star, which is red because it is surrounded by dust, can be seen in the new Webb picture right next to its white friend. Webb can see a famous group of five galaxies much better and brighter than before. In this picture of Stefan's Quintet, four of the galaxies are about 300,000 light years away. They're locked in a cosmic dance because the gravity of each galaxy affects the others. The Webb picture also shows new galaxies in the distance that Hubble couldn't see. Webb saw two separate objects where Hubble only saw a small dot. Both Hubble and Webb use gravitational lensing to learn more about the early universe. This is what happens when a group of galaxies in the far distance is so big that it bends space-time and bends the light from galaxies far away behind it. This makes mirror images of those galaxies, which are then sent back to us. So, the mystery object's marks can be seen in three places in the pictures above. On the right, the breakdowns of these three pictures of the solar system show how much clearer Webb's pictures are. They show two very different things. The secrets of WR140. WR140 is what is called a wolf rayet star. These stars are some of the most extreme ones we know about. They can sometimes send a cloud of dust into space that is hundreds of times the size of our entire solar system. This is a rare but beautiful event. The radiation field around wolf rayets is so strong that dust and wind are blown away at about 1% the speed of light, or thousands of kilometers per second. Even though all stars have winds, these overachievers have winds that are more like hurricanes. Importantly, this wind has parts, like carbon, that flow out and form dust. WR140 is one of the few wolf rayet stars in a binary system that has a lot of dust around it. It is in orbit around another star, which is a huge blue supergiant with its own fierce wind. Only a few systems like WR140 are known in the whole galaxy, but these few give astronomers the most beautiful and unexpected gifts. As you might think, dust doesn't just stream out from the star and form a hazy ball. Instead, dust only forms in a cone-shaped area where the winds from two stars meet. Since the orbit of the binary star is always moving, this shock front must also move. The sooty plume then naturally forms a spiral, just like the spray from a rotating garden sprinkler. WR140, on the other hand, has a few more tricks up its sleeve that can make its display even more rich and complex. The two stars don't move in a circle, but rather in an elliptical pattern, and dust is made on and off as the binary approaches and leaves the point of closest approach. How light works We know that light has motion, which means that it can push on matter. This is called radiation pressure. The result of this event, which can be seen everywhere in the form of fast-moving matter, is clear to everyone. But it has been incredibly hard to catch them in the act. The force weakens quickly with distance, so to see something being sped up, you have to follow the movement of matter in a strong radiation field very carefully. This speed up was the one thing that models for WR140 were missing. Our data didn't make sense because the speed of expansion wasn't always the same. The radiation pressure was giving the dust a boost. Getting a picture of that for the first time was something new. Every time the star goes around, it looks like a huge sail made of dust is being unfurled. When it catches the intense radiation coming from the star, the dusty sail suddenly jumps forward, like a sailboat when it catches a wind. Smoke rings in space. All of this physics adds up to a stunningly beautiful end result. Every eight years, WR140 goes around the sun and blows out perfectly shaped smoke rings, like a clockwork toy. Each ring is shaped in such a way that all of this great physics is carved into it. All we have to do is wait, and the expanding wind will blow up the dust shell like a balloon until it's big enough for our telescopes to see. Then, eight years later, the binary returns to its orbit, and inside the bubble of the first shell, 
A second shell that looks just like the first one grows. Shells keep piling up like spooky giant nesting dolls. But we didn't realize how close we were to having the right geometry to explain this interesting star system until the new web image came. There were not just one or two, but more than 17 beautifully carved shells, each one almost an exact copy of the one before it. This means that the oldest, most distant shell seen in the web image must have started about 150 years before the newest shell, which is still young and moving away from the bright pair of stars at the center of the system. With their beautiful plumes and crazy fireworks, the Wolf Rayets have given the new web telescope one of the most interesting and intricately patterned pictures yet. Astronomers are all on the edge of their seats, waiting to see what new wonders this observatory will beam down to us. Let's wait and watch. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about James Webb Space Telescope and its groundbreaking discoveries? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. See you guys in the